Hello and welcome to the Jesse James Beads Facebook page. I'm Gem Hawks. I'm broadcasting to you from the United Kingdom. You may notice that my voice is a little bit off kilter this week. I've had something of strep throat, so you'll forgive me if I'm not quite as chatty as I normally am. But I'm really, really delighted to be with you here today doing one of the things in jewellery, certainly, that I love the most. We're going to learn to wrap cabochons in wire. Now your tools list for today is going to be super basic tools. If you've only got chain nose pliers, cutters and maybe a round nose pliers, that will be plentiful for what we need to do. However, I am going to show you a couple of alternatives for tools throughout today's demonstration, just so that you can get a handle on what else you can use if you want to go a little bit further into wire weaving, wire work and wire wrapping. You might have to turn me up a bit, my voice is on a bit of a bit of a limiter today so many apologies what I want to know is how you are doing what you've been up to this week I've not been with you for a full seven days now so where are you coming in from today how's the weather how have you been up to anything spectacular today are you all ready for Halloween do you dress up do you dress the house up tell me everything while we're just waiting for everybody to come in and join us today for our wire wrapping fun shenanigans halloween shenanigans maggie is in good morning linda is in good morning and sorry to hear that bless you i hope that you can hear me okay many apologies you might need to turn me up just a teeny tiny bit today marisol says hello and rosanna says hi hello my darlings it's lovely to see you thank you so much for hanging out with me it's this morning over on the east coast around 11 a.m and then this weekend in the uk certainly the clocks change and i'll have no idea again debbie is in from michigan donna hi gem how is my british friend a little bit hoarse i'm like a very small pony so I've got a little bit of a throat thing going on, so you might have to turn me up. Many apologies for that if you do. Rosanna says, I had a custom order circlet, got it mailed off yesterday from Montana to Minneapolis. I made some circlets yesterday, some elven inspired ones, and I should have brought one in and plopped it on my head for you to see, Rosanna. Hopefully that has arrived or will be arriving very, very soon at its destination. Sabrina says hello from Indiana. Marisol is in Tucson, Arizona. We don't really have fall here, but my house is decorated from top to bottom. Absolutely love to hear it and love to see it too. Send me all your cool decoration and photos. Margaret says, hi, Gem, hope you're feeling better. I'm on my way down and I'm up and at them and I will never, ever, ever let it get me down. You know me, sweetheart. Barbara is in. Hi from Detroit. That's Motor City. Hello, darling. Trudy is in. Hello. Good morning from Roberta and beady friends from a windy north GA mountains. Oh, is that Georgia? Northern Georgia? I'm not 100% sure. Hello from Shville. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a place or if it's just referring to my relative quietude today big juicy squeezy autumnal hugs to you all i hope that you're keeping well oh roberta says yes it is i got it right that's amazing because there's so many things to learn about your beautiful country and i 100 percent won't get it right all the time but i will do my best so i hope that you've been having fun this week are you playing with halloween jewelry or is it the house you decorate i'm trying my hardest to be better to go out on saturday to see some friends maybe do a little bit of light dressing up haven't decided yet. Linda is in from Nashville. Hello there. I hope you've had a beautiful day so far. Well, the remit today is to have a chat about cabochons and wire work. So my story, I started playing with bits of wire in around about 2012, 2013, but it was a good two years. It wasn't until 2014 that I decided I'd be brave enough to try wrapping cabochons. Now a cabochon, if it's not a word that you're familiar with or heard of before, is a gemstone, or it could be resin, it could be another material. Your basic cabochon is domed on top and flat on the back. Now there are many, many variations in terms of size, in terms of depth. Sometimes they're faceted. Sometimes you can have a, a cabochon which is faceted on both sides. Now it, dis, it does still get described as a cabochon, but in the classic sense, you would have a flat back and a domed top very many different ways that that can come out to you. So today I'm going to be working with Aster Haze, which is my favourite colour in the whole universe. Let's have a look. Donna says, love your necklace. Thank you so much, my, my, my lovely, my lovely, my darling. 
some of those words are words maggie says good morning everybody thank you by the way donna that's really kind of you bex is there hello my darling bex is a absolutely fantastic wedding gown designer who has just acquired one of my uh, necklaces that I made for a mutual friend of ours a few years ago so I'm really pleased it's gone to be loved with you. Margaret says Maggie from Edinburgh Scotland. Yes Margaret is a very dear friend of mine and she is in the beautiful city of Edinburgh. Cabs I always stay away from maybe I can get over it and do something. Marisol for two years I played with Wyatt and was too afraid and I'm hopeful that perhaps if I can instill a little bit of confidence in you, that you be prepared to give it a go yourself. That's what I want to share with you today. A design that once you get over a couple of little tweaks and techniques, you can wrap cabs as well. And I'm going to show you how to wrap really quite a small cabochon in the same way. Because 2014, I got really hard into wrapping cabochons, but it took me quite a while to feel confident enough to do tidgy tiny ones. So I've got a design for you today that will work with pretty much any size of cabochon. I'm working with Aster Haze, which is part of the colour alloy uh, suite of beautiful collections of gemstone and I think resin and glass and crystal, all part and parcel of the same beautiful group of beads and cabs all in one. They're absolutely stunning. MC is in from Texas. So what I want to do is just put you down onto the board for a second so that you can see what it is we're going to be looking at. And if you do hear any light coughing in the background, I'm very sorry, that will just be me. <coughs> sorry about that. So this is the technique that we're going to be learning. It's the truest definition of a basket weave that I could ever hope to share with you. So we're going to be working out a way that you can house slim cabs or deep cabs or even really quite tiny cabs. So I'm just going to give you a quick look of those while I take a quick drink of water to try and help me from coughing in your ear. So again, many apologies for my voice today. <laughs> I hope that you are all feeling fit and fine yourselves. Now here's the piece that we're going to wrap together today. And the technique that we'll learn will be transferable over to really quite small pieces as well. Now this is actually a bead, it's got a really mighty fine drill hole in it, but we're going to treat it as if it was a diminutive cabochon. That's really quite a teeny one compared. This is the one I'm going to be working with primarily today. Now you will please excuse me if I cough slightly whilst we're talking today, but just have a quick gander at those. <coughs> while I'm over in the corner quietly having a gentle cough. So those are the pieces that we're going to look at recreating today. I've taken the remainder of my kit and just stranded it up in a basic piece of beading thread, just crimps and crimp bead covers on either end and then a little bit of chain and a clasp down at the end there just to bring that all together and the colours are so complementary a really beautiful suite of beads and cabs all together. So in a moment I'm going to show you how to get cracking on the weaving segment of today's tutorial, a real entry level introduction to wire wrapping cabochons. Now there is a bit of a trick and a technique to learn and that's keeping the two wires that form the main part of the design the same width apart all the way along. What can happen, and what has happened even to a small degree in my design, is that the lines will wave slightly. I'm going to hopefully give you some ideas on how you can avoid that becoming too much of a problem in just a moment. So if you're just joining us now, I would like again to apologise for the quietness of my voice. I've been a little bit under the weather the last couple of days. I've been primarily laid up on the sofa with a streaming service as my best mate couple of dogs on my legs and, and just feeling a little bit under the weather so apologies for the quietness hopefully you will still be able to follow today's tutorial I looked at that and thought I can't do that beginner question mark <laughs> <coughs> I know what you mean but I promise you it is achievable once we get the first little bit underway you will see that it is absolutely achievable and it's transferable over to different sizes of cabochons now the piece that we're going to work on there are two of these that came in my kit today and they are 
they're not overly slim, they're not overly deep, so it's the perfect mid-ground of a piece to share with you. Um, I've tried and failed at keeping them apart, I need to learn your trick. Well, hopefully you'll be able to get something that you can use from this, and I'm going to share a couple of different techniques with you, and hopefully one of them will stick for you, because one of the things that I've come to learn is I've, I've followed literally one tutorial in my whole life, I have to learn for myself. And what I want to do is take the pain out of wire work and give you the benefit of all my experimentation. And if I can show you four or five different things and one of them works for you, then it's a win, isn't it? So that's what we're going to go for. Ah, who else is here? People have snuck in while I was just being chatty. Sissy is here. Hello, Gem. I hope you have some water on your desk. My darling, I have water. I also have some iced coffee. Now, it's terribly late in the day for me to be drinking iced coffee, but today... I needed to. Now Rosanna says, yes, you can, Marisol, which is absolutely true. Big hug, Sissy, by the way. Thanks for tuning in. Margaret says, hi, hope you are well. Uh, Monica says, how wonderful. It's lovely to have your company. Thanks for joining us. Rosanna says, you need some hot tea, lemon and honey. Now I started the week with lemon and a, a honey made out of a blossom of the coconut palm. I, it works for me. You know, it's all good. And I've had too much lemon juice now, so I've switched to ginger and turmeric, which means that the inside of my mouth is a very funny colour at the moment. But I will be going back to that in a moment. Hi from California. Prayers to wish you well. You're so kind, and Thank you very much. Morning from Linda. I had the same bug, just starting to feel better. I'm glad you're on the mend, my lovely. Hello from North Carolina. Good morning. Hope you feel better. Beautiful necklace. That's so kind, Deborah. Thank you. And stars in as well from Monica. Thank you so much, sweet one. That's very, very lovely of you. OK, let's get back down to the board and we'll crack on and hopefully one of these techniques will work for you. So this is what we're going to achieve. It's a basket setting. Now, I've often talked about the basket weave. It's sometimes known as a figure of eight weave, a back and forth weave, or in this instance, it's a three and three. I'm going to move these pieces out of the way now. I just leave that one bit up in the top corner and everything else I need to shuffle out of the way just for the moment. What we're going to do is start with two lengths of wire. Now the longer amount of wire that you can work with, the more options you will be left with when you get up to the top of your design. If you cut pieces away they will always be useful. I have a little scrap pot into which I put short lengths of wire. Nine times out of ten I can find a use for them, including this little U-shaped hanger up at the top, which is what I linked my two lengths of beaded section together with. It's a very, very simple device. It just means that the pendant sits nicely and hangs beautifully on your beaded necklace, which sometimes with beads isn't always the way. So that, of course, is being awkward and not getting out of my way. Now, my two lengths of wire are both 18 gauge. They're both round. They're the same length, which is approximately 15 or 16 inches of wire. Now, this is quite a lot of wire to work with. Now, there are a number of different ways that you can strengthen this wire up. You could very simply, instead of using 18 gauge, you could take that up to a 16 gauge instead, which is automatically thicker and heavier. Kathy says, hi, hope you get better. Thank you so much. Lisa says, hello from California. A spoonful of honey is very helpful. Thank you very, very much. That's all good, kind advice and well wishes. So I'm working with my 18 gauge. It's comfortable in weight to wear on the neckline. And if you do size this down and decide to make a pair of earrings with some small coin beads, I was terribly afraid of making or working with small cabs when I first started, but you absolutely can with this technique. And you would probably not want to use a 16 or a 14 gauge for work that sits in the ear because it can become a little bit heavy and draggy. We don't want that. So 15 or 16 inches of wire. This is 18 gauge I'm working with. Now the easiest way to strengthen a wire like this is to put it through your Beadalon wire straightener. Now try as I might, I couldn't find mine, but it's three barrels of a plastic material. You pop the wires through and pull. It comes out straight and smooth and also a level harder, a level firmer. So if you don't have one of those, mine is, I don't know where, somewhere in my house, I guess, but not here. If you don't have one of those, there's another couple of ways that you can strengthen this up. 
Now what we do want to have is smooth wire, but if you run this between the thumb and forefinger too many times, it actually becomes nice and fluid instead. Would you excuse me one moment? <coughs> Terribly sorry about that. So whilst we do want to have nice straight lengths of wire, and we need two of them, we don't want them to be too fluid. So once you have straightened that wire, the first way to make these stronger, and we want them to be stronger so that when we're weaving we don't draw them together too hard, you can take any flat facing set of pliers, open and close gently along, and what I would do is just push the wire through little by little. <coughs> Excuse me from one end to the other. Now I'm not absolutely mashing those pliers together, I'm gently tapping them and I hope you can hear. It's just a gentle opening and closing and it strengthens that wire up. It causes the wire to become just a little harder. Now it doesn't matter which flat pliers you use, you can use any flat pliers you like. As long as you're just opening and closing gently, moving along the length of the wire you will harden that slightly. A little nom nom on the wire is absolutely correct. Another way that you can achieve this is to use a small block and a hammer. Now I have mashed the end, the plastic end of my hammer rather hard um, because I, I don't have a gentle touch unless I'm using my brass hammer which I've had since the dawn of actual time and I can be very very gentle with this. So if you have turned me up because I'm quiet, now's the time to stick your fingers in your ears for just a second. So what I've done there is I've just attacked the wire very, very gently. I'm not changing its shape. It is still a round wire. If you have nylon head pliers, which I again don't have, uh, I have lost them somewhere in the depths of my house, you can close the nylon pliers. Imagine these are your nylon flat facing pliers and draw the wire through like so. And in that way you will strengthen up the wire just enough for our project. Now the reason we want the wire to be stronger, and if I just show you now, just by flexing that gently, you can see it returns a little bit more cautiously to straight. And we do want those two to be straight and side by side. So to make things a little bit more visible for you on the board, whilst my pieces are made in silver and silver, or copper and copper, I'm going to demonstrate now with the two outer wires being copper and the weaving being a silver plated colour. Now I tend to work off the reel wherever I possibly can. I just need to move my hammer out of the way, so sorry about the banging noise on the desk. So I've got a massive one kilo reel, which is 2.2 pounds of wire over to the left hand side and what I'm going to do is free off around about six inches or so just to have that six inches in the right hand just like so. So if I take one of my wires out of the way and take my first wire which is going to be the lower wire in this demonstration what I'm going to do is lie that underneath so my finer gauge wire is underneath and I'm going to wrap very firmly three times around the one side so that's one, two, and three. Every time I do a little coil of three wraps I want that to be neat and tidy. Now I will use my nails to bring that all together. If you prefer to protect your nails you can put one side of your uh, pliers on the top and one side underneath the heavier gauge of wire. Very very gently draw that together and you'll have the same effect which is to say you've tightened up that coil, those three little wraps around the wire like so. Now, one thing you need to be aware of is, whoops, <laughs> it's spring-loaded because it's attached to my very large coil of wire. If I just trap that with my pliers for a second, the depth of the cabochon is not the width apart that you need these two wires to be. It needs to be much wider than you think, probably around about double the width of your cabochon between the two wires, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean now, but I just wanted to get an idea in your mind that this cab is reasonably slim. If you've heard the word cab and you didn't know what it meant, it is short for cabochon. Now this is domed actually on both sides. It has been drilled, so it's technically a bead, but it works in exactly the same way. Rosanna says I usually use my nails as well, one of the reasons I never have my nails done. 
case in point, these are wire workers' hands. So apologies, they're not the prettiest hands on the planet, but they do work really quite hard with wire. So I'm going to pop my cab back out of the way. I'm going to take the pliers off the top. And what we're going to do is take a look at what we've done so far. Now I've started this weaving section just over to one side from the centre of our 16 or so inches of 18 gauge wire. The finer gauge wires come over the top and I now need to push that down. I'm going to bring in the second wire, the second heavier gauge wire. What I want to do is to just start off by measuring the distance. I'm going to bring my cabochon into position and that distance can be just less than double the depth of the cabochon for this type of cab which is domed on top and bottom. So I pop that back out of the way. The finer gauge wires come over the top on the lower wire so it needs to now go underneath the upper wire. I'm going to wrap that three times in exactly the same way just around that upper wire. So I'm working with around about six inches of loose wire over on the right hand side just because it gives me an opportunity to show you how things get started. Excuse me. <coughs> Terribly sorry. Now what will happen here is that your two wires will want to move together as you weave along in the same direction. So our key is to try and keep these two like railroad tracks or tram lines. We've set the distance here, we're just going to have a look at that cab, sit it in between, the distance is just little less than double the depth of the cab. So we need to keep that distance all the way along and we're going to be aiming for a length of weaving that will completely encompass our cabochon from one o'clock all the way around the face to eleven o'clock. So there's a gap at the top and what you'll need to do as you're weaving is just offer that weaving up to the cab and make sure that you have enough as we go. So I'll measure that in a moment for this particular cab and we can take it from there. So there are basically a couple of ways that you can ensure that you keep this the same distance apart all the way. One is to move incredibly slowly. So my finer gauge wires come over the top of the upper wire. I need to push it down and bring it underneath. So we're always going over the top to under, over the top to under. Hi Gem, Sarah and Makers from Maria. Hello Maria, I hope you're having a beautiful day. So I'm going to just make sure that that's nice and straight. There's a small kink in my weaving weight wire. So I'm just going to straighten that very, very gently, very, very gentle movements with those pliers before I bring the tail around underneath the lower of those two tramline wires. I'm going to grip hold really firmly of those two wires, push the leading edge through and draw that around so I wrap another three times. And I will show you in just a second, push that down and then it's going to come up and underneath on the other side. So I need to tighten up these coils down on the lower of those two heavier gauge wires. And you can see that we've made our first figure of eight movement. So all we need to do now is a lot of the same. So it's really quite dull. This is the sort of thing you can do when you're watching telly if you feel confident that you can concentrate on keeping the width exactly the same. Now one thing you can do is take a piece of paper you can take a marker pen, which I have just over here, and you can mark a distance on your wire, on your paper, sorry, so that you know how far apart this needs to be. If that doesn't work for you, a very, very firm pinch with your non-dominant hand will help. What you can do is very, very gently flare the ends outwards, just a little bit, so that you have better access with that fine weaving gauge wire. So I'm going to draw that into position, push that through, one, two and three, push that down and bring it underneath the lower of those two wires. Now there are two ways that you can approach the weaving. You can go for a slightly more open, open weave, beg pardon, so that you have these series of V's and inverted V's back and forth. I like to absolutely fill the wire with weaving. So it's very, very dull. It takes time to build up, but the practice is incredible. One tool that you can use that you may or may not have come across is a ring clamp. Now these are designed so that you put the ring in the end, you tighten it up with your uh, wing nut, 
and it holds the ring safely while you set a gemstone in there. There are two types of ring clamp that I've seen over the years. One has the uh, wing nut attachment and the other has a gap at the far end into which you put a wedge shaped piece of wood. Now both of these work in exactly the same way. And what you can do with wire work if you feel that you need a little hand is to clamp that over your section of wire that you're currently working on. Let me just tighten that up. I'm tightening it up from underneath with that wing nut and then I'll tilt it up to show you. So you trap that at the set distance that you want to continue weaving. So they are not expensive tools but it gives you a little more freedom to hold your work whilst you get the wire set up. So the reason I start off with a short amount, six inches or so on the one side, if you're left-handed you would probably have that on the left and the wire on the right, but it is quite useful to have a tool like a ring clamp. However, you absolutely don't have to work with one. Let me just free that away. They are just a nice to have. So that's one of the ways in which you can try to get that nice and even all the way along. Now you can see that I've slightly botched my wire there with the marker pen. So what we're going to do is cover that up with weaving anyway. You'd continue weaving all the way to the right if you're right-handed, to the left if you're left dominant, and then you'd flip the wire over. So we're going to imagine that I finished on this side, and then I'm going to flip the wire over to the right-hand side, my dominant side. Free off a good foot of wire or so, and then just flare this out ever so slightly to allow me to come in there and do a lot of weaving. So it's figure of eight. So we're always going down when we go over the top and just swapping from side to side. Now, if you can't work off the reel for whatever reason, it does take a lot of wire. This is why I work with a kilo block. So what we would need to do, let me drop this monstrosity out of the way and show you one that I prepared earlier. Pop that over to one side. And this is the kind of length that we'd be looking for. And if I just grab my ruler, we'll work out how much this is. That's around about two and a half inches of weaving. Now, if you wanted to, you can speed this process up by weaving more open. Your cabochon will still remain the same. However, when you pull this apart, when you open that up, you draw those tram lines closer together. So if that is going to be your plan, I would go for exactly double the width of the cabochon rather than slightly less. Perhaps even more. So I'm just going to close that back up because I prefer the look of having that all neat and tidy. So this woven section of basket weaving sits in the centre of my lengths of the heavier gauge wire and this is 18 gauge which we strengthened with a little light numbing or hammering if you prefer. So once we have got our basket weave into position the best pliers that you can use are either completely flat, these are like a bullet tip, but they're the same depth all the way along at the joint as they are at the tip, or if you're lucky enough to be able to get hold of some duck bill pliers which are flared at the end, they're even better. In a pinch you can use the rounded side of your bent chain nose pliers or your standard chain nose pliers, however these pliers cost me about a pound, about one dollar sixty maybe and I've had them forever they're not expensive things and they're very very worthwhile having if you're wanting to get into more wire work so what we need to do now is to put a dent in our beautiful woven section so what I'm going to do is allow the pliers to sit around about halfway across that weaving and just push down so it's almost like sacrilege to begin with because we're kind of denting something that we've made that is as perfect as we can make it. Now one thing I would say is when you're working with wire, nothing is ever a mistake, nothing is ever a waste of time. It's all teaching you, it's all learning to maybe have a different technique the following time, find something that works for you, your body, your hands your hand-eye coordination. There's nobody other than you that will work in the same way. So everything that you do, even if it ends up in the big round file marked experience, truly is a way of helping us learn and move forwards in our own jewellery making journey. So just because something isn't perfect the first time doesn't mean it was a waste of time. So hopefully you can see that there's a gentle bulge, almost like a 
you can see a bit of a line across the base there. And what we want to do now is just make that larger. I'm going to use my nails because it's a darn sight quicker than any other technique. So I started off by using my pliers to generate a bit of a dent. I'm just enhancing that now by hand to make that deeper and if anything slightly more rounded rather than sharp. So can you see it's like some of those fancy Christmas ribbons that we get for wrapping which are shaped. And the next thing that we're going to need to do is just enhance that by bringing those two lines together, the two outer lines. If you feel that you can't do that by hand, then again you can go back in with those pliers and deepen that gully almost that we've made down the centre. And in a moment I will show you that slightly more on end and you can see that we're making a bit of an angle in the centre just like so. Let's just get to the end and then I'll see if I can show you that a little bit better. Yeah, that's starting to be more visible. It has a ridge on one side and a valley on the other. Yeah, absolutely. So if I can show you that upwards. So you've got like a dished effect. So the next thing that we need to do is find something which is rounded, which replicates the shape at the bottom, the six o'clock position of our cabochon. Now you can set this cab exactly how you want to. You could set it in the landscape. I like to see a cab like this set in the portrait. So when I refer to six o'clock, I mean the cardinal points of a clock face. So we've got 12, we've got three, we've got six, and we've got nine. So we're going to find the center of our section of weaving that we've just created. I'm going to bring in my wooden ring mandrel. I've had this forever so it's very very battered. So what we're looking to do is to start with something that's just slightly wider than we actually need because we can bring that in gently as we go. So I'm going to start quite low down on my ring mandrel and what we need to do is have the ridge side outwards and away and the dished side or the valley side inwards. So I've just started very very gently to move that upwards and inwards and it is very much a bit by bit process. I'm ever so slightly to the left of centre which means that I just need to put my mandrel over to one side and roll that around until I can get that centralised. Again I would please urge you to not think of anything that you make which is less than 100% perfect. It's all experience. Leanne says I love this technique. Thank you Leanne. It is a good one to learn cab wrapping with and I hope that you can all enjoy this and find your own way to, to make it your own. So I'm going to continue with my round form. Now it could be a marker pen, it could be the outside of your pliers handle, it could be a lip gloss or something similar, whatever you have that's round that's going to replicate this kind of shape and after a while you'll be able to just draw that around because you started that shape. What we're looking for is to have a basket. That's why we need to work so hard to get that ridge really, really neatly on our weaving. So I'm going to move the ring mandrel out of the way and offer the cab into position. I'm just going to slip that down inside the basket and push those two edges together, like so. So you can already see that this is going to really safely house this cabochon. If I give that a shake, just by holding those two end sections together, this is what I call the shake test. You know that you've got enough distance between those two tram lines to ensure that that cab then can't escape. So if I just drop this out of the way for a second, there's a piece that I prepared earlier to remind me what to do next. So you can see here that I've crossed over the rear wires together at the back and those will become the bale. Now the bale, if you're not familiar with the term, is this round part through which a necklace can go or in this instance the beaded section of our colour alloy Aster Hayes collection of beads. So I pop that back up over and to the side, very noisy on the desk, sorry about that. What we're also going to do is just drop that cab back into position and replicate the cage that I made earlier. So we're going to draw two of those wires. I'm going to designate this the bit the back. I'm going to draw those together across the back now. So if I flip this over so you're looking at the underside of the design and just cross those two wires so that they meet slightly together. 
Now I think in this section I probably made this a little bit longer than I needed to, which means that it will be loose and likely come undone. So what I would do is probably, if you've made it too long, in fact it's a teachable moment I can show you how to do that. Where are my cutters? If you've done a little bit too much wire weaving, what you can do is cut up the centre and then you can slide off these little almost like barbed wire sections. Now just come away until you get to the last one where you'll need to trim that end wire. So I cut two away on this side. I'm just going to tidy that end neatly. Flip that over onto the other side and I'll cut two away on this side as well. So they just slide off the end. Now these things will absolutely positively hurt like an absolute hurty thing if you allow them to get out of your control. So the best thing you can do is get rid of them straight away into your scrap pot for melting. So you can see that we've got a little bit of a residue just there. So if you've made slightly too much, then that is the way to deal with it. You can take some of it away if you need to. Marisol says it's like a snuggy blanket for the cab. It absolutely is. And believe you me, I have been using my snuggy blanket this week. So I've made that slightly smaller now. In fact, I think I'm probably going to take another one off just here because it's slightly longer up there. Now, by contrast, if you haven't done quite enough, don't worry, because this technique allows for tension to hold the top section. So if you find that instead of weaving from 1 o'clock to 11 o'clock, you've in fact woven from, let's say, 3 till 9, this technique may still work for your cabochon. The beauty of, if you are like myself, and I know like Leanne, um, of, of something like this is that you've probably got a cab that will fit in this perfectly anyway if you've collected cabs like I know myself and Leanne have. So I'm going to pop my cab back into position and get those two rear wires to snuggle really nice and close together. So once they're close together, I'm going to turn both of those up as if they were facing directly to 12 o'clock. If I just pop my hand into position and hide those rear wires. That's what I mean, the two wires need to be coming up at the 12 o'clock direction, even if they're not at 12 o'clock dead. So what we would do now, if I take the front wires, which are just hanging out and doing not very much at the moment, I'm going to warm them. Now, when I hardened this wire earlier by hammering it, I need to be very careful how I bend this now. So I'm very, very gently coercing that to just move forwards with the heat of my thumb. Karen says, hi there, I'm new to your live, your art is amazing. That is so, so kind of you. I'm really grateful for you for saying that. Thank you very much. Uh, Lois says, morning on this rainy day in SC. Is that South Carolina? Leanne says, you're such a great teacher. Oh my gosh, don't, because my head will explode. Anne says, I love this weave. I've done the weave and made it into a rose with a faceted stone in the centre. That's amazing. Such a great way to use it. Whoops don't know what I did then. My mouse went crazy. So this is the rear of the cabochon and this is what we're going to use to create that bale. Now you remember when we did the weaving, the back and forth weaving earlier on, that's what we need to do here to create a decorative bale. What I don't want to do is repeat that over and over again. So all I'm going to do is grab a small residue of wire. If I can grab my... Ow! <laughs> If you're a worker with wire already, you probably know what I just did. I grabbed the end of the wire and hurt myself. What I'm going to do is just do a very small section of very, very rapid wire weaving on this moment here, on these two rear uprights. So what I would do is continue in the same way. So I'll do a three and three weave. For the sake of expediency, I'm going to trim away the excess rather than wrapping it round. Hopefully you will look twice and cut once and not make the silly mistake of cutting one of those uprights. So once that's nice and tidy, take that down to the base and we would just do some quick weaving just to show you where that will end up. Now I want this to be quite tight, so I'm going to draw that over and together and I would just tidy that end piece up later or possibly cut it off if I was too annoyed and I just wanted to move on. So if I just pop that into position, you can see that that would continue all the way up if I just very, very loosely wrap this around those two uprights, you'll get the idea of what you would need to do. That is absolutely hideous. I can't even look at that. Wow. I'm just going to cut that away now because it's too upsetting to look at. <laughs> We're going to go with imagination weaving. So, 
I'm going to weave all the way up here to around about an inch and a half to two inches length and that will be plentiful for us to create a bale with. If I flip the design back over, so we're now looking at the front side again. So this is the front side of our design. Um, Margaret says it's the same in Edinburgh. If it went under the nail then it really hurt. Rosanna, you are absolutely correct there. Lilia says it's the same in Georgia and very much so in Edinburgh. Helen is in. Hello. Sabrina says I like your teaching too. I'm going to try to do this later on. I've never done it before. Thank you for teaching this technique. Very good at teaching the weaving. Thank you so much. You're all really, really kind. Thank you for being lovely to me on a day when I'm actually feeling a little bit rubbish. So I appreciate that hugely. We're back at the front side of our design. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of heat into these uprights and I'm just going to cross them over. So I'm pulling very, very firmly after I've heated that wire, like so. So that is the nuts and bolts of our design. What I would do is fill this section in at the back with weaving all the way up. Once I've got a nice length of tiny weaving, I'm going to create a curl to come all the way around and that will create our bale. But to secure the design into position, you see these little tiny sections down at the base of that imaginary weaving. That's where we're going to take these two front sections of wire to. So I draw that across on one side. I'll show you from the front now. So I'm drawing them sideways across each other and then to the back. So hopefully you can see exactly what's happened there. The two front wires have crossed over and now they're being drawn around the back of the design. Now at this point you've got a number of options but the simple and clear way to do this is to take your cutters, trim away the excess. Now these two sections of wire are both plentifully long to be used for other projects so I wouldn't discard them, they would go into my scrap pot for reuse. We're having a look at the back again now. So what we need to do now, this is tricky but not difficult, tricky but not difficult. Uh, Lilia says, fascinating, I'll have to watch it again so I'll make sure I get it right. Absolutely, I'm here for you, croaking into eternity. That's the beauty of the Facebook Live. Now you remember we pushed these rear wires slightly back earlier. I'm just going to very, very gently allow the warmth of my body to heat those uprights and pull them flat until they're true again. What I now want to do, you've seen those front wires have been crossed over, so left has gone right, right has gone left. What we need to do is take one of these tails around the uprights beneath the weaving. So what I'm going to do, those are nice and warm, I'm going to start by turning very, very small amounts of wire through and posting that between the uprights. And I want to get that nice and tight, so I'm just carefully small movements taking that through and the wire because I curved this a little bit to begin with is just cooperating now this can be trimmed really short look twice that you're only trimming the very very end section away let's get that out of the way and we're going to do the same thing on the other side now the reason I say it's tricky but not difficult is that you just need to make sure that there's space remaining for you to get the opposite wire through that gap. So I'm going to start by curling that wire around. If I turn this up towards the camera, hopefully you can see that I'm curling the end. Try not to get my hand in the way. So you can get the end all the way through that gap down at the bottom. And then just start slightly lower on down that wire until it pushes in between. If I flip this over, you can see where that's coming around, but you can see it's much looser on this side. So I'm just going to tighten that up by pushing the wire through, pulling from the other side, and it's all very small movements. It's not a technique to do if you're in a hurry. Get that nice and even, and then I'm going to trim away just the excess. So I'm going to hold that by the bit I intend to cut, look all the way around to make sure that my pliers, my cutters rather, are only covering the bit I definitely want to get shot of. And then I'm just going to take those two tails and draw them in nice and tight. So push, push, just get that nice and tidy, and the same on the other side. Now if this is a little bit messy for you, that's all absolutely fine, because what will happen once we've filled these two upright sections, and again it pays if you can get them to stay the same distance apart all the way, 
when you're working on a bale sometimes I find it's better to just bring them perfectly close together so that it doesn't have any wavering in and out as it goes along so once you have got a really nice section of weaving around about an inch and a half to two inches join with me in imagining that this is a nice full section of weaving it's exactly the same weave I would use bale making pliers are a wonderful thing to have because they enable you to have a section which is the same size all the way along if you try and create this technique with tapered pliers what will happen is that one side of your bale will be thinner than the other and it will always bug you that it's wonky you can of course use a pen a marker pen if you want to or something slimmer than that is absolutely fine but we're going to work with the bale makers let me just catch up on your comments real quick uh, that's the hard part gem I'm always in a hurry once I start a project uh, I have to work as quickly as I can to get it finished because I'm so excited I get you there Roberta absolutely love this technique you're a great instructor that's so kind of you thank you ever so much I'm not sure how to pronounce your name is it Janine 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 apologies if I've mashed your name I'm very sorry Linda I love watching wire wrapping it's beautiful however I have tendonitis from trying to do it so I'll just watch love basket weaving I do it in crochet and yes that's on hold too bless you Linda I have tendonitis in my left shoulder and I'm awaiting an operation so um we are in it together my lovely we're in it together what we're going to do then to create this bale that we've uh, anticipated first thing we're going to do is remembering this is the back of the pendant now if you have a cabochon that you're using that has a pattern that you want this is key if it's exactly the same on both sides it's slightly less important but what I'm going to do is draw that section forward slightly straighten it up in the middle and then I'm going to roll the bale making pliers around at a size that I see fit so I'm going to just separate these two wires so that they flare out sideways it is much more sensible if you leave your bale on the bale making pliers whilst you're doing this and what I'm going to do is push one side out push the other side out and this will be at the end of your woven section so if you imagine again as we mentioned earlier that we'd filled all this in with wire weaving we're then left to close up the gap so what I'm going to do is just hold this in my hand push that closed by hand now my wires because they're not sealed together may wibble around a little bit and slightly come apart don't worry about it because once you've put that weaving into position it will enable that to stay much more stable once this is set up what I'm going to do is warm that tail of wire now we do really need that to be quite warm I would never lay a flame over it because we've already set our cabochon some cabs don't like to be heated anymore most of them will have had heat and pressure in their life to become the beautiful gemstone that they are uh, but some especially if they've been coated or they're man-made don't particularly want to be heated so we're warming that wire by hand Sandy says you always make this look so easy it's just practice Sandy but thank you so much Marisol even without the weave is pretty yeah I, I actually quite like to see a bare naked bale at sometimes so once we've warmed through we're going to start with the wire on the right hand side it's a move that just happens all by itself I'm going to pinch this together you wouldn't need to pinch if it's been woven take that tail all the way around the neck and just wrap and wrap and wrap so I've taken that around three times and I'm just going to tighten that up slightly I need to do the same with the other wire so warm it through one of the things that you can do is avoid hammering too close to the end or if you're doing the nom nom technique avoid doing that too close to the end so again if I just turn that up to camera like so nice and warm and fluidly wrap it around and it's almost like magic that it happens so we've got two tails of wire to work with I'm going to make them the same length by trimming away the excess into the scrap pot now we're going to pop in now with some round nose pliers let me get those other ones out of the way hopefully it's still warm enough to work with and what we're going to do is put a coil to hide any messiness at the front there so starting really close to the end of those round nose pliers to the end of the wire I'm going to start by creating a bit of an open loop shape flat pliers to move that onwards into a coil like so until the coil sits center point 
Now what I think I might do is have an up coil and a down coil. This is the front of my design. So I've got a coil coming up. I pop back in with those round nose. Since the bale is naked, you can make rabbit ears. You could. <laughs> it's your pendant. You can absolutely make rabbit ears. This is rabbit ears. Like so. Split bale, as it's often known as well, but I like rabbit ears. That's hilarious. So I'm going to take, again, the end of those round nose pliers to the end of the wire, draw that over the top, start creating a coil. It's a little bit open. I'm not going to overly stress. Take this all the way along until we've created another coil and just draw that down and over the surface at the top. So again, my rabbit ears bale has come slightly awry because I didn't have the time, I didn't want to waste the time um, filling that in with weaving, but you absolutely could weave that if you wanted to. So that is the design in a nutshell. And you can use that exact same design on much smaller pieces as well. And that's something, I'm going to bring you back up to my funny face. Hello, hello, I'm still here, it was me all along. <laughs> so that's the nuts and bolts of the design for you today. It's a basket weave that acts like a basket, and I, I just love that. Once you get the hang of keeping those two main wires the same distance apart all the way along, making sure that there's adequate space. So even for the tiny, tiny section that I've just shown you on the board a second ago, it's still quite a distance between those two tram lines or railway lines. And that's to ensure that once you've put the bend in to create that shaped basket, that there's enough distance. Because it can be really heartbreaking if you work and make the most beautiful weave in the world and then your cab doesn't fit. This technique can be used on coin beads as well. You don't need to have them quite so wide um, because obviously coin beads are very, very narrow. It can actually be used on coins. Now, there are certain laws in the United Kingdom about what you can and can't do to valid legal currency. You're not supposed to be able to drill it or change it in any way. So one of the ways if you wanted to wear currency, I have a full set of silver currency from the year my grandmother was born, which was 1916. For some reason a few years ago I decided I was going to collect it. Um, so you could, if you wanted to wear something that was special to you, a coin that was special to you, this technique is really cool for that as well. But for the uh, colour alloy aster haze, which is what we've been working with today, it's a really beautiful technique to allow as much as possible of your cabochon to shine out. Now when you're working with cabs and you're new to it, it can be quite uh, mind-boggling how you can possibly achieve something. But I hope that today's tutorial has shown you that this is absolutely achievable. Um, if you're physically able to do that weaving, then you can absolutely make this pendant. And I've just popped it. I'm going to take you back down to the board for just a second before I love you and leave you. There we go. The rest of the Aster Hayes collection is absolutely glorious. Purple is my favourite colour. I would wear it every day if I could, but I tend to also wear quite a lot of black. That's just who I am. It's a lovely collection of beads, both metal, resin, crystal, plastic. I'm not sure what these ones are, but they're very, very cool little faux pearls. And these also came in the collection. There's a couple of those. So when I first got into uh, working with cabochons and wire, I was afraid of setting small cabs for a very long time, but you can use the same technique as we've learnt today to set the smaller cabs or flat coin beads as they might be. They're drilled so they're coin beads rather than cabochons. I'll pop some photos up later on. I hope that you've enjoyed the uh, technique today and I hope that you feel that you uh, feel confident enough to have a go. And hopefully I'll be back with you next week, slightly less breathless and coffee. And many apologies for the slightly muted voice and apologies for any coughing that you might have heard during today's video tutorial. I have uh, been here for Jesse James Beads today. I was about to say I've been Gem Hawks, but I still am. That's just mad. <laughs> I will see you in a week, my darling. Um, and I look forward to it then. If you have any questions, I'm going to be in the comments section now. If there are any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. Until I see you again, bye for now.